Hello, this is Dr. Amy Olson from Lakewood Animal Hospital. I'm here today to talk about homemade pet food diets. We get a lot of questions here at the hospital about what the best food is to feed. And sometimes it's what the, the pet is already on. We have a lot of people that ask about augmenting their pet's diet with human food, either chicken or uh, vegetables, things like that, or completely doing a home-cooked diet where 100% of what that animal takes in is formulated in the home. As a veterinarian, my main concern is just n nutritional adequacy. Is the diet gonna provide the proper amount of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, the proper calcium-phosphorus ratio, the proper amount of fat and protein during all of the life stages of that individual animal. Nutritionists see, on average, a higher percentage of nutritional problems, nutritional deficiencies in animals fed a home-cooked diet than they do on dogs on commercial diet. So for me, that tells me that the, the research and development these pet food companies are putting into their foods is, is doing what it's supposed to do. They're, they're getting it right more often than not. And the fact is, nowadays, there are commercial diets available for all life stages, and for just about every medical problem you can imagine, there is a food out there that's already formulated to be healthy. So I tend not to be a huge fan of home-cooked diets. Uh, we have a lot of people in this area that um, are interested in that, and really they're just interested in feeding the best possible nutrition to their, their, to their pets. Uh, I just argue that feeding a home-cooked diet is not always the right way to go. There's a few things that we can talk about. First of all, when people are concerned about feeding commercial diets, often it is because of the amount of recalls that have been out there, whether it's treats or, or just regular food for, uh, from the commercial side. That, those are valid concerns for sure, but I would caution you because there are far more recalls on the human side of things, whether it's you know the spinach things that we've all heard of, other fruits and vegetables, meat, um, there's some studies out there where a shocking percentage of human grade food, whether it's eggs, chicken, beef, whatever it is, has contamination with, again, depending on the meat product, Salmonella, Campylobacter, E. coli. So simply just feeding a human grade food does not mean that you're going to sidestep all of those issues as far as food safety. Um, and feeding those foods and cooking them doesn't get rid of them either, just like us some of those toxins uh, do not get cooked out of food. So that is a big concern. The other side of the coin from the safety issue is some of these foods need to, some of the supplements need to be supplemented in a very specific way. If you add too much of a very small uh, mineral or vitamin, you can actually be causing toxicities. So it has to be done very, very carefully. You need to be using measuring devices, have a gram scale, and be not just adding things in a blender kind of casually to make sure that this is appropriate. Even diets that are formulated with additional dog vitamins and things like that to try to be a catch-all so that we get it right prove to not be adequate nutritionally for a lot of these guys. If you still decide that you really would like to feed an at-home cooked diet, there are a lot of resources out there. We have listed in the uh, Doc Fluffy Will Only Eat Chicken um, handout on our website, there's some, some websites there and some links where you can actually go and hire a nutritionist and you give them the information about your particular pet and then they formulate one or several diets for you that is should be nutritionally adequate. This is a lot more complicated than just putting some chicken and some bone meal and some yogurt in a blender and you know calling it good and putting it on the on the on the plate. So it can be done. Um, the safest way to do it is again to hook up with a nutritionist and if you have questions or concerns about whether or not it would be better to feed a, a solely home cooked diet, please give us a call and we can talk to you about that. But in addition to just feeding a 100% home-cooked diet, a lot of our patients are being fed 
say 90% or 50% of regular dog food or even cat food and then supplemented with human food. So we add chicken on top or broth or vegetables. And that brings up a whole other set of concerns. While, again, as long as 75, 90% of the food is, is dog or cat food, probably will get away with not causing a nutritional deficiency, that's not always the best thing. Uh, we have a tendency to feel that protein, so fish, chicken, is a good healthy protein, so we can add a lot of it to our diets that we're feeding our animals. But in reality, a lot of the times we're overfeeding. What you're doing is you're adding this yummy, yummy protein to an already kind of dry food or food that they really love, but they will stop themselves when they're full. And now all of a sudden they have something added to it and they go, well, wow, that's really delicious. I don't want to leave any of that. So they actually will overeat. We very commonly see overweight or even obese, morbidly obese pets come in and the owners say they barely eat. We have to doctor their food and add all kinds of good human food to get them to finish their food. In reality, what most of those patients are saying is, I'm full, I don't need any more food, and we are just making it so irresistible to them by adding these extra things that then they're finishing their plate. So we're giving them the proper um, uh, ratios of, of vitamins and nutrients and protein and fat and so forth, but we're just literally overfeeding by adding human food to it. And you say, well, then we can just decrease the volume. Well, if you just take away the people food, a lot of times the animals will self-regulate themselves on the dry food or the wet dog or cat food. So there's a lot of reasons that I discourage um, home-cooked diets, adding human food to the mix. Um, Dr. Sawchuk, who is a wonderful private practice, uh, general practitioner out at uh, Madison where I got trained, had three rules for feeding table food and I thought they were three great rules that have stuck with me. So the first thing is if your animal will all also eat their regular food and finish it, it may be okay to give some table food. Second rule is if they are not overweight. So if you have an overweight patient or an overweight pet, that automatically means we're feeding too many calories and the first place to remove calories is feeding human food. The third rule for feeding human food is do they beg? If they beg, no human food. So if you have a pet that is an ideal weight, that is not begging and continues to eat their regular diet 100% uh, of the time in normal fashion, then you're probably okay to continue augmenting the food uh, slightly with human food. But if you have a pet that begs a lot, is overweight, or even worse, obese, or refuses dog food or cat food, we have to take away the human food so that we are giving them the appropriate calories and nutrition in the dog or cat food. And we can help you here on how to do that. There's lots of ways to do it. There's unfortunately a lot of medical problems, especially oral disease, mouth pain, things like that. They keep them from eating normally. So that's what we're here for is to help you out, figure out what's right for you. Hopefully this was just a little teaser about the things to look for and the things to be concerned about when you're augmenting your animal's food with human side food. So if you have questions, our number here is 972-2203 and we're happy to talk to you about everything. Thanks so much.